Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. I'm going to make him an offer again. I love the smell of make come in the morning. Go ahead. Make my day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of COL Movies. I'm so glad you could be here. Here, my name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Uh, sorry to say, but uh, Ray and Steve weren't able to make it here today. So instead, I decided to bring my other co-hosts over, uh, Damon and Gary. I hope you all really enjoy this episode. Um, we're going to put this in the Cubs Out Loud feed because we haven't really done a COL feed in a movies feed, uh, episode in such a long time. But... Guys, I'm so glad you could be part of Sewell Movies for the first time. Thanks. I just broke it, these guys. I'm it will be an interesting experience. Making a practical joke. <laughs> I mean, but it's I mean, appropriate, we right? Riding. We could have kept <laughs> rolling with it. I was fine. I would have been like, sure, let's do it. Oh, oh, oh. oh is that, I, I only... I, I that only pulled... You say thanks? I only pulled right. the, the, the... That's rolling with it? Look, if we were going to do real COL movies, we would also have had to talk about a movie that we watched uh, from the past, and then we would be talking about a trailer in the future. But we're not prepared for that, so I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to skip the past. We're going to skip the future. We're going to just stick with the present right now for a movie I haven't watched anyways. (laughs) I was waiting for that part. (laughs) So, Gary... What movie are we talking about today? <laughs> well, uh, Hollywood made its first ever quote unquote mainstream all LGBTQ romantic comedy bros. Okay, so clarification. Mm-hmm. What do you what does that mean? This is the first time a major Hollywood studio has released nationwide with a financial backing effort a gay romantic comedy that was produced, directed, written, and had a cast of thousands all-star lineup of LGBTQ identities. Okay. So it was about the cast and crew. Right, Billy and Eichner. In fact, that was, uh, that was like everybody. I was wondering yeah. because I'm like, oh, I... Way back in, let's see, when was it? 2011. I did an entire month, during the month of June, I did an entire month of watching gay movies, and a few of those were gay romantic comedies. But they weren't necessarily star- starring gay actors and everything. But, uh, yeah, the Broken, uh, the Broken Hearts Club. And we yeah. had uh, Jeffrey. One of my favorite films of all time. Also, I really want to see the play that is based off of. Uh, and then I couldn't remember if any of the other comedies I watched were actually considered romantic comedies. Which you bring up really good points about the past, even though we weren't going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> so we'll put a pin in that. We're going to probably return to it. Um, Opening weekend box office numbers did not match expectations or hopes. Opinions online led to lots of digital finger pointing uh, as to why it didn't do well. So having seen the film, this is about what Damon and I think are the ups and downs in the movie. Did it meet our expectations or do we care about it very much? Um, Just a few... few, uh... Uh, a couple of stats, just a couple. Okay. Um, 
Uh, it's a uh, hundred and fifty. Uh, one hour and 55 minutes. Mm -hmm. And according to Rotten Tomatoes, where a lot of people go to find out, hey, should I go see this movie? The tomato meter for critics is 88%. Not bad. The audience with 500 plus verified ratings, 90%. Hmm. Of course, that's the people who watched it, I'm assuming. Uh, well, logged in here and put in that digital that's process. that's like the key issue right right according to those statistics it's a well-liked movie but if it's a well-liked movie why didn't many people go to the movie theater to pay buy a ticket and see it that's that's the key crux of the opening weekend the first like seven days 10 days 14 days like numbers not being what people had hoped for mm-hmm um, there's lots of criticism behind like the release schedule. It got postponed. It was originally supposed to be in August. It got moved to October, like, you know, September 30th, I think like, you know, so it's like, why would you release it in, in the spooky season Halloween lineup, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, lots, lots and lots and lots and lots of opinions, um, right. about why it didn't perform well. Um, I went and saw it. I wasn't going to go see it. Damon and I talked. So this is this comes from at the end of last week's show. After When we were off air, we were discussing it. And then we just discussed it so much. And it was like, we should just do an episode. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, and... you know, I just, um, I wasn't going to go see it. And then I read up and I waited until uh, I got, I listened to a podcast with film critics um, who are gay. And actually bears. And they said, actually, that they liked it. and But they did have, you know, there are some flaws in their critic opinion. Huh. So I was like, but the interesting thing that I heard the most was um, I was seeing repeatedly, like, go buy a ticket, go see the movie. Because if it doesn't make very much, Hollywood yet again will not want to take a bet and invest right. in such a thing to make it. Right. Because that's what speaks is dollars, not high yeah. critic review. Right. Whatever. And that's sort of the situation um, on my end, in a sense. Um, so I saw it uh, with the chorus. Um, we were actually talking about it uh, as a possible social gathering for us outside of rehearsal. And I was like, oh, that would be a really good idea. So I set it up and I sent out a uh, you know, Facebook invite to the to our members and said, come, you don't have you know, bring your friends, you know, bring your enemies, bring somebody. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the idea, you, you know, former member, you know, current singing member, who whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just meant to be like a fun activity for us to do. Um, I had seen posts about it. I had seen some of the um, call outs and um, I don't want to say pleading, but that's the word that comes to mind about trying to get in interest in this movie going. Because um, I had heard about it. I heard about it, I want to say months ago, probably through um, Twitter or um, Facebook. And I, I watched the trailer, and it was, eh, it was okay. Like, I, you know, it was it was a cute little trailer. I will admit the trailer is a good representation of the movie. But what's funny about the trailer is that it doesn't really show as a romantic comedy. Mm. You know, so, but that's just me. Anyway, I, I'll get into some of that stuff here in a minute. Well, and I uh, didn't see the trailer going into the movie. Mm, yeah. Like, I kind of went in blind. I knew that uh, Billy Eichner was in it. I knew that Billy Eichner had, like, kind of written it, was, like, executive producer, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, I knew that it was supposed to have an all-star cast. Yeah. And I knew it was supposed to be a romantic comedy. So I had mixed feelings. Right. Going in. And I told Damon, I, I have a movie pass membership where I get one free movie credit each month for a ticket. 
and it technically you know does save me on if i just went and tried to buy the movie mm-hmm. ticket on my own unless i want to look at a discount or something like that right. so but i knew this year this was my birthday gift to myself a year ago i wanted to be able to go to the movies more often and i knew if i'd already paid for the whole year and i get one every month even like they they um bank and you know kind of roll over and stuff so i was like well if i have a friend come in from out of town and i have like you know an extra one we could go together who knows what there will be there's going to be lots of ip movies that i want to see like the big tent stuff lots of marvel things that kind of stuff so i had actually already bought my ticket for wakanda forever thank you very much (laughs) and then i saw the stuff about bros and i was like you know what i got some like extra spares or whatever to spend so i went and got it so yeah i didn't (laughs) see the trailer until after i already watched the film ah and i was like huh yeah i don't think the trailer would have made me go see the movie (sighs) yeah so um but the idea was to get the chorus together to try and see the show, to see it, and um, we went. And, and? my original, my <laughs> again, like I said, the tra- like you said, the trailer was very interesting, but it didn't scream romantic comedy to me. Mm. Um, and maybe that's, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm having that like crux because I feel like and and this is kind of kind of getting into like the conversation parts of this. They were treading a very tight rope in regards to this film. Mm-hmm. They wanted it to appeal to as many people as possible without black with without our with blasting. It's a gay movie. Does that make sense? Like it, it, it was this weird balancing tightrope act of making this, at least the trailer, especially, but like this film to be a yes, it's an LGBT rom com, but it's also mainstream. It's for everyone. Everyone will find something to enjoy about it. But will they? So yeah, let we can yeah. Um <laughs> because here's 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 the thing that I have an issue with. I think marketing wise, they tried to like play it to mainstream, like down the middle of the road America. And having seen the movie, spoiler alert, just just head head it off right now, let y'all know. David and I are probably gonna discuss some plot line things. So if you haven't seen the film and you want to see it, either don't listen or maybe yeah, you know, put us on pause later. and come back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Afterwards, so if you're, because if you're live, like we're gonna spoil the movie. So this is your option. This is your time now. You get three seconds. <laughs> okay. Well, girl. Back. Okay. Poppers, <laughs> orgies, grinder, or some facsimile of that. Like hookup culture. Like uh. And presumptions about stereotypes, like I was just like that. That stuff. That stuff is something. Every someone like everyone will find approachable. Like so. I, I, but I, as I say that, I have to temper it. So okay, here's my first caveat. Mm-hmm. I don't watch romantic comedies. So you like Jeff? So this no, is... no, no, not exactly because I don't like <laughs> modern comedies in general. Okay. It's not just ah. romantic. And I and I told you this last week, David. If this had been billed as just a comedy, I probably would have liked it more, even though watching it, I would have been a little confused because mm-hmm. of the romance aspects of it. Yeah. But like, because I like comedies. Like mm-hmm. the birdcage is a right. beautiful, like just funny, co- like comedic film. It has some problems now, all these years later. But you know, I mean we have moved on as a society in some ways, but yeah, like, so like the, so my first strike for me personally is that I'm not a fan of romantic comedy. So then to go see a quote unquote gay Uh rom-com, I was like, I think I told you it took me what, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes to get into the film. Cause I was like, what in the hell am I watching? Right. So you went in blind, 
right? You didn't see the trailer. You didn't see you. You kind of only knew a little bit about it based on what, right. like, you know, words, what have you, people are saying. Right. I went in having seen the trailer, so I kind of had an idea of what it was going to be. And in addition to that, um, we went, I think, a week or two after it premiered. Okay. So Buzz was going around, obviously, in the LGBT circles, what have you. You know, people are talking about it. People are seeing, showing that they're seeing it and watching it and loving it and blah, blah, blah. So I went in with that on my shoulder Mm -hmm. and like, okay, I know it's a rom-com. I know it's funny. I know it's Billy Eichner. I know it's, it's this, 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 and this. Like I had all of these like bullet points. Now I didn't have, obviously I didn't have the whole, you know, plot of the movie, but I had the bullet point kind of ideas Mm -hmm. with that though. Um, you talk about how it took you 15 minutes to get into like, just get into it, the fact that it's a romantic comedy. It took me 10 to 15 minutes to get into the movie because it was going all over the place. Mm. With these, like, imme- like right in the first, like, um, I want to say, like, 10, 15, 20 minutes of the movie, we find out all of this stuff that gets, like, thrown at us all at once. We're getting random-ass flashbacks of things that Billy has done uh, while he's talking on his podcast, um, you know, he talks about how he's um, he was writing a movie. He's written children's books and other books. He's written about gay history. We now know he's like as the big plot of the movie is that he is the head of the new LGBT history museum being built in New York City. So that is the like. I don't want to say overarching plot, but that's like one of the major plot points of the movie. Right. You, you are correct. Like in the, in the first uh, few minutes, it is pretty fast coming. You find out that he's a podcaster, a vlogger, and he answers a series of questions from his audience. And that's what reveals his background and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he drops the bomb at the end that he's the new executive director of the first national LGBTQ mm-hmm. uh, his, history museum, right. which honestly – I thought was a very interesting like piece that they decided to use and develop. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Because I was like, yeah, that's right. We don't have one of those. Like that would be kind of neat. And it would be interesting to see who they selected to be the first like director of that and what, what its potential could be Um, in a real world, in a real world situation. Yes. Not a fake movie where they talk about blender or whatever they call grinder. I don't remember. (laughs) Um, And, but then it immediately shifts to, as you talked about, like hookup culture. Because he was talking about it on the podcast that he's single. So we find that out, which I guess is kind of the point. Which was kind like, of a duh. Yeah. Like you get that kind of easily. He well, has his character's single. a dick. Oh. What? Right. He uh, is. He's a rude New Yorker. Right. And I'm right. like, why would anybody want to date you? Mm. Like they might hook up with you, but that's yeah. it. And yeah. then even at that, that one hookup scene was really awkward. I was like, what is this? I was like, do gays do this? I don't, I don't know that gays do this. Yes. I'm not going to be like, yes and no. I will put it yes and no. <laughs> I don't think it's that. It seemed. it. Oh. So, okay. They didn't have sex. I mean, they were. They laid in bed next to each other and masturbated. Well, okay. And, so the, think, and, the, and the guy who's the host comes, I, and, I, and Billy Eichner's character does it, and the and the guy that's the host is like, you get to finish? And Billy Eichner's like, nah, probably not, or it's okay, or whatever. And he's like, well, here, let me help you clean up. Like, it was so, like, it was so fast. It was so strange. And I was like, this is how people hook up? So I... <laughs> I'm mm. confused. It's so weird. And I want, so there's a part of me that wonders several things in like that moment. Cause again, it was going so fast. We only got like little bits and pieces of their quote unquote, like chat conversation. And that's all we got. Like kind of like 
you free or whatever. I can't remember the exact word. Oh, but that's the, but isn't that the one where it, like the lead up is so long? Like, I think that's the other thing that kind of bothered me was they made it seem like they invested an hour or an hour and a half prep, like chat conversation, whoever just to hook up. Uh huh. If I remember correctly. Yeah. It's and now been a couple of weeks. I, I, I remember in my more slutty days, that happened a lot. I mean, you could have a co- like I re- say, like I remember like having like these like long ass conversations and chatting with someone to kind of figure out like what are you into, what aren't you into, what do you want to do, who, where are we going, who are we meet, where are we meeting, blah 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 blah, and you know, kind of hemming and hawing and and uh, small talking, building up to potential hookup but my impression in today in 2022 is a lot of that's gone by the wayside we we I, joke about dial a dick like the apps have so much information in them it's like my impression it's like what's up you want you want to have some fun that's it like, like i mean to be to be blunt it'd be great if it was always like that but it's not <laughs> So anyway, like you don't I understand have, like, the reality of the world and hookup apps anymore. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> so wait. So this goes back to like why this was not a film for me, because I was putting too much reality into a non real situation. But it, the thing is, it's and it happens. That's over, the problem over again in, this, in this film. That's the problem. Is it kind of has this weird like blur? It's real. But it's also not not (laughs) like we just like, okay, fine. Well, since we're kind of talking plot, like the thing that bothered me the most about the fucking movie, especially in the beginning, was all these like flashbacks to things that were going on, like like him talking with the the producer about producing the gay history movie and then being like, eh, and then flash forward. Like, I'll just because I think this was hilarious and weird and stupid and also kind of wrong. Um, at the dinner, he he hooks up with the guy and then he goes, he's like late for dinner and he goes to meet dinner with his friends. And at this dinner, we have two couple, the couple that are dating Simone. Hi, for the Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race fans out there. Um, and they find out they're doing, a, they're trying to build a throuple. And uh, they, Billy Joe, it's not his name, not Billy in the movie, right? Fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> Shit, is it name? On. Bobby, it's Bobby. That's right. I was gonna say it's close. It's not Billy though. But Bobby um, kind of jokes that they're gonna, you know, that they're gonna kind of make announcement to their to their grandmother, and then they flash to this scene of the couple calling one of their grandmothers and having this like it. It wasn't. They said. It wasn't like we're in a throuple. It was like we're fucking, our, we're 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 fucking a guy or you know whatever it was, and it was just like, really, did we really need that? Did that really need to be a part of this? Right. It it, it was an extreme comedy, like yeah, like bait and switch kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's it reminded me of like a Family Guy or a um one of those kind of like cartoon shows, like where they just do a random like cutaway gag. To come back to the reality. <sighs> Another game. But anyway. Movie? Maybe. It's been so long since I've seen that one. I don't remember. I don't remember the plot. So. Well, and those it, type of movies is pretty normal. You would not remember the plot. Fluffy. I mean, it was like the American Pie of gays. There's also mm. another gay sequel. Right. I know. Right. I watched both uh, of those back in 2011. <laughs> and see, like, I didn't mind those, but I went into them knowing that they were comedies. Right. Like, you go with, you went into those movies with the understanding that these are meant to be, like, parody, comedy, right. you know. Farcical. You know, farcical, yeah. 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 You knew going in. That these yeah. were not meant for real poignant like information, and that's kind of where this movie 
it falls in the middle for me. It feels very... It feels very like it's trying to be positive and uplifting about LGBT people, but then it also adds this comedy er element to it. So you get this kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink, like, ha, 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 we're still funny. The gays are still funny. Like, don't, you know, don't knock us out yet because we can still make you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Like, that's, that's kind of what it got for me mm. overall um yeah so do you think it was trying too hard that is a good question jeff um <laughs> yes. by the way you were talking uh, that's what it sounds like but you know yes i i kind of i could say that that i think it was trying i don't want to say it was trying too hard i think it was just trying hard to like get a a a it was trying to get a point across but the point was muddled with the comedy i mm. think the point was that lgbt people have you know similar relationship romantic struggles and entanglements and issues just like the rest of you and, but we also have a whole other like dynamic and history and culture that is in a way separate from what you all go through mm -hmm. um but again, it, like I said, it was coming across as um, try, I don't want, yeah, pushing the album, trying to push it too much, maybe too much on that side. Like, we want you to know that we have these relationships and we can have these problems and we have these issues, but at the same time, we are also different and complex and our relationships can be unique and special. Like it, like it, it, it feels supremely layered. But instead of giving us something along those lines, we had to make this a romantic comedy. And I, and mm. again, I don't know, I don't know where, um, you know, what all was going on in the back, you know, the background and the, you know, getting up, leading up to getting greenlit and what have you. But I'm going to assume that this was pr posted as, promoted as a romantic comedy from the get and maybe through production and writing and what have you, it got very convoluted. Um, well, what I'm wondering is, is if because it was going to be through a major film like company, like and since it was meant to be mainstream, they decided, well, we have to follow an existing formula in order to get it made. Right. And I, and I just realized as you were talking, David, I was like, I think that's where things went wrong for me is that I think they were trying to follow a romantic comedy arc. I think they were trying to follow the template and cookie cutter mm -hmm. it, but like make it the gay version. And I just right. don't know how successful they were with that. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, it, eh. it was, it was doing, it did something. I'll put it like that. I did something. I did enjoy it. So I'll kind of put that out the way. I did enjoy the movie. I laughed a lot. I enjoyed the jokes. And here's my next point. I think I enjoyed the jokes because I was in on the joke. Which you and I discussed this last week a little bit. Like I right. also overall enjoyed the film. And as I posted on Twitter, I laughed, I cried, I cringed. Um, but ultimately, in the end, I liked it. Once I got past my the awkwardness and the discomfort I had in the beginning and like had to tell myself, that's right, it's a romantic comedy. Like you have to suspend reality. Like there's just mm -hmm. gonna be some bullshit presented to you on the screen that you're just not gonna get with because it's not real. And like, and so, you know, you there needs to be some I have to be open to the farce. 
to that kind of concept or whatever. Mm -hmm. And once I got past that, I, I found it better. But there were some issues that I had with it. You and I did end up discussing this last week, but it just occurred to me a moment ago. I was like, I think part of the problem was is that they were trying to follow the formula of a romantic comedy. And that's where I was like, eh. Yeah. Like, I think it's like, oh, now we put in the goofy montage. Now we make fun of our own culture. Now we, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I think I would have loved this film far more if they hadn't followed that and tried to make it unique. Mm. Instead of putting rose tinted glasses on it and, you know, a boa and some glitter. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah. Eh. Like, yeah. There, there I think is... it could have been, I think it could have been so much better if they had broken the mold and just done it differently, yet yeah. still told the same story. Right. Like, I think for me, there, uh, there were parts of it that I, I got. As, you know, someone who's been in a relationship and and recently, you know, within the past you know, six, seven years, you know, has actually like come out to family and talk to family and kind of let that kind of happen um, more so now than before. Mm-hmm. And those kind of things being there and dealing with the like, you know, you you wonder how your romance is going to look to someone on the other side Mm -hmm. and i don't like the reason i said that as opposed to like normal because i don't think it's normal i just know we're all normal we're all it's a relationship it doesn't matter who's the partnerships with Mm -hmm. um part there were there are moments in the movie like i said that i you know found funny. There were moments, like you said, there were moments in the movie I was kind of like, this doesn't, like, this doesn't work. And I'm, we're, we're kind of going through the movie, and the first thing that pops in my head is the sort of intro scene of, I'm going to try to find his character's name. Aaron. Aaron, right. Right. So we meet Aaron, who was the male leads, Bobby's basically romantic, you know, interest throughout mm-hmm. the movie. They meet in a nightclub, mm-hmm. which it says in the Wikipedia thing. I'm like, they meet in the club, and it is a it's all classic, easy. classic gay trope of a club. They're shirtless men everywhere, fall everywhere, everywhere, but two characters, right? One of them being Bobby, and one of them being Henry, who is played by Guy Brenham, who right. was the sole bear slash fat, positive, supposedly represented person mm. in the entire cast. We'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, but Aaron. So, you know, her, like, you know, shirtless men, people drinking, da- go-go dancers on 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 platforms. It's like if you've ever seen a gay something, like mm-hmm. this is what it is. Like, and let's 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 be honest everyone. This would not be a bar in New York. I'm sorry. I am sorry. No. <laughs> we've 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 talked we 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 know about this. There's not a lot of space in New York, so I don't think this would be, excuse me, a, a space that they would have. But anyway, having said that, Smith to be leave aside, this felt very much like if, if and, and Jeff or, or Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, this felt very much like Queer as Folk. Thank you. Because that is exactly the vibes I got out of the American version of Queer as Folk, where, which is ironic because in that TV series, it took place in Pittsburgh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but it was actually filmed in Toronto, <laughs> Canada. And a lot of people, anybody who's ever been to Pittsburgh or been around or lived it or whatever, they're like, this doesn't look anything like Pittsburgh. Like, and, <laughs> and I remember in the 90s, we talked about this and we were like, all these people are going to come to Pittsburgh and think they're going to see Queer as Folk. 
bitch, the queerest folk isn't there. Like that, like it was just purely like a name in a show. Nothing about mm-hmm. it was real, like in right. terms of the local area. So I agree with you. Like, like I, I because I haven't been in a club in New York, but you make some, <laughs> you make some good points about space and size. I'm like, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually filmed it in LA. Right. So yeah. Yeah, we will like that's one of my so I've talked about this just last week when we were talking again. One of my biggest issues with this movie overall is we go through months of them together. We know specifically Mm. one of the time periods that they are they're talking about is Christmas. Christmas in New York. Mm -hmm. Nary a jacket to be seen. Hallmark does a better job at Christmas in New York. Right. Wait, like, I... wait, Jeff, here's the ultimate irony. Luke McFarlane, who plays Aaron, has been the, the straight male romantic lead in Hallmark movies. And within this movie, there is a spoof parody channel called. What is it? Oh, Hall. Uh, Hall something. Hall Heart. Something, something like weird. that. Yeah. Like, so they spoof Hallmark, like legitimately making fun of it as a channel of existence. Yeah. And that's the funniest thing is you're like, those movies yeah. are and, about showing winter than what you're describing. Yeah. And, I'm like, and, and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they do like the whole, like one of the other thing, again, like they are making a lot of fun of like Hallmark, Hall Heart or whatever they called it. Like, appropriating especially like gay lgbt like movies and like each time they present a movie from hall heart the couples get bigger and bigger and bigger like it's i think it was like my gay couple like it was and then there was one for like oh yeah that was that was so extreme and then at the end at the movie i think one of the movies was like this polycule of like six or seven people and it was like, okay, wow. And the main character's by. Yeah, yeah. It was it was weird. Anyway. But again, like like you said, Jeff, like that was that was the part, and it seems weird for me, but there's like a perfect example for me is they are having a scene. This is sort of, you know, hey spoiler alert alert moment. They're having a scene where um Bobby and Aaron are on near the river they're like near a bridge and you can see there's a river and they're they're like this is i think after um this is when they break up i'll put it like that so spoiler sorry every romantic comedy of course they're gonna have yeah yeah so something they um they're standing at this city um city bike i think they're city park or whatever city park whatever you are city bike moment but they are near the river mm-hmm. having this conversation. Mm-hmm. Again, this is supposed to be New York City in winter. At night. At night. So I think one of them is in like a, one of those like vest, like hoodie, like bubble coats. And then another one, I can't even remember what he was wearing. It doesn't matter. Maybe he had a coat on. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But these are like light jackets, if nothing else. And I was sitting there looking at this moment and they're having this argument. There's no like showing of breath like you would do in any movie that out, they're outside in the cold. Um, the river is behind them. Obviously not like frozen or anything. There's no snow anywhere. But we're supposed to believe that this is winter slash Christmas holiday in New York City. In addition to that, Christmas in New York City, and there are no lights. No holiday-themed lights, no red and green, no Christmas trees, no no, no nothing. There is not a thing anywhere other than them saying it's Christmas and his family, Aaron's family, is visiting. Do you get that this is Christmas? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the, there's the, the party, but... 
Are you sure it didn't take place like in Texas? I mean, it might as well have. I mean, they like, oh God. <laughs> like I said, if they had, if they had said anywhere else but New York City, I might have believed it a lot more. And I get why you put it in New York City because that's the you know biggest city in the, in the country and blah 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 yada yada yada. It makes sense for the LGBTQ center to be there because of Stonewall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If if they had put this in San Francisco, since they probably filmed in L.A. It would have been more believable. Well, granted, you couldn't have, you wouldn't have had it because there's a lot of distinct things about San Francisco that if you didn't have it, it would have been weird. But it just, it, it just, it took a lot out of me those specific moments because I was just like, we're obviously going through time because it's a romantic comedy. We have to see this arc, as as Gary was saying, of them like getting together and spending time together and then the ultimate breakup and then all of the other stuff and then the eventual, with every, you know, gay rom-com or rom-com period, them somehow getting back together. Like we have to have, we have to kind of have that arc. Mm -hmm. So we know time is passing, but it's hard to tell in this movie because there's not a whole lot of you don't you don't get a like you don't get a starting time you think obviously it's modern right but you don't get like new york city february 2021 i'll just throw it out there kind of thing you don't get a real good start time of when this movie begins and over the time in arts, you get points of time. We know there's a pride because that's mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we know there's Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's another one. And then the only other time arc we get is when the LGBT history center actually opens. So in the beginning, they're still trying to get it open. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they actually open it. So, well, right. And the in the third act, it opens, and then pretty much the very end, we jump another three months. Right. But the right. only reason you know we jump three months is because of something that gets said by the characters, and then you move to the next scene, and it's basically three months later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so this is one of the things you and I discussed last week is I had a real problem with like all the time changing because there was no explanation. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, really? We can't do a Chiron? Like we can't put CG text at the bottom corner to tell us yeah. it's now like three months later, four months later, two weeks later, one day later, like it, nothing to and, help me understand the passage of time. And I don't need a lot of it. Don't get me wrong. This film didn't need like every scene like two weeks later or something along those lines, I got some of the gist of what they were going through time-wise. Somewhat. But there were other moments that completely threw it off for me. We only know it's Christmas because they're saying it's Christmas. Well, right, because notably what happens is that very specific scene, they're in a store, a shop, something that is the hall, hall heart, oh. it, like promotional convention, something like that. And like, mm -hmm. and that's where Bobby's character kind of like snipes at all the movies that are being released and how like welcoming they've become. Mm -hmm. And it's really over the top. And that's where they really like schlack on the, the schmaltzy parody like crap. And, and but it, yeah. but they're indoors, so everybody kind of has these jackets on. But then there are Christmas trees all around. I mean, like you know, they you know that's that's your stuff. Yeah, you do see them buy a Christmas tree. I do remember that. So anyway, but anyway, it just with no snow. <laughs> I'm not you know, 
I guess it was a supremely like mild fucking winter in New York City somehow. Do you remember what I said to you last week? Right. Yes. And I'm not going to I'm not going to have you repeat that because I think it's bullshit. Um, but, uh, uh, Maybe sorry, I'm, I'm, anyways, <laughs> I'm looking through, like, I'm like, as I keep going back and forth, I'm kind of going back to the, um, there's a, I'm going to the Wikipedia with the synopsis of the movie. Cause it's kind of giving me where my like points are. And one of the things I will say, so I kind of add a little to throw it back to where it's more our culture in a sense, maybe, um, they introduce another character. Um, shit, Josh. So, Josh is basically Aaron. <laughs> he's a built guy. Um, he's a former high school classmate of Aaron's. And they first run into him, I think, one on, their, on one of their initial dates. They, like, go to a movie theater. And, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, now I remember. Okay. Because the other thing about this movie, by the way, is Bobby is from New York City. Mm-hmm. Aaron is from upstate New York. So it's supposedly this big, major, wild difference. Anyway, I just want to throw that out there. So well, no, because they're playing on the whole like city dweller country bumpkin, yeah. like trope that Bobby yeah. is born and bred New York City, fast talking, loud, rude, kind of in your face, like right. intense, insensitive. Aaron, on the other hand, it was closeted, like grew up in a rural area, and like you know, he, so he's he's not at the same place that Bobby mm-hmm. is in his. Right being gay and so when aaron runs into the old high school friend right and aaron and bobby are leaving the movie theater and then they run into the old high school friend with his girlfriend now i noticed in this scene of all the scenes that that billy eichner portrayed bobby i thought this was amazing because for once he shut up like just stood there and like minded himself because he quickly picked up on the cues that this is not the time and place Mm -hmm. to be my normal self. So he shut down, but he pulled back. And I was shocked that that happened because it's the only damn time in the whole film that he does it, Mm -hmm. which is why later when there's this issue in the relationship about communication and blah, 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 I'm kind of like, right. right. Yeah. So in this moment, so Josh is a former friend. And high school, like, they played hockey together. I guess hockey is the sport in upstate New York. Whatever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is ice pretty north. Which, get a lot, gets a lot of snow. You know, very Minnesota-like. Yeah, of, yeah, snow and ice. That you never see. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey David, wait. David, here's here's your snow and ice reference. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> well, when you're in upstate New York, because I I do remember some of the time or in some of the visits we made to my initial hometown of Saugerties, New York, which is upstate from New York City. You get a lot more snow. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna anyway I'm gonna try to let it go, but I probably won't. Um. So yo, know, he's engaged. Josh is engaged, and they meet the fiance, and they kind of have this moment in the movie. And like you said, it's what I real I remember that that he was very much. Bobby was not Bobby, but I think Bob, like you said, Bobby was in this in this moment was like, oh, this is someone who may not know that this Aaron is 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 gay right that that we that we exchange dna (laughs) right 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 so and then the guy well 
so we get this one little, like another little thread, which I will admit, one of the things I did like this is that they threw these nice little threads into the movie. We we learned that Aaron had a crush on Josh back in high school, obviously when he was probably closeted and all that stuff. Of course he did. Well, yeah, like I know that's kind Why of Why else point. are we going to introduce Josh? Right. Well, they anyway, I, I there could have been another reason, but that's just me giving... No, nope, he's purely there to move the plot forward because of the issues and the da-da-da. I'm trying to not spoil too much if people want to watch it. But I was like, otherwise, you didn't need the character at all. Didn't need to you introduce did. him. Well, you technically didn't need a fiancé other than to prove the point. The 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 initial point. Right. But this is, goes back to my earlier thing about the romantic comedy trope and following a cookie cutter te- kind of template. You didn't need you didn't need Josh at all, let alone Josh with a fiance and then everything that comes after that. You could have mm. still had some of those beat points without making it about the high school mm. friend. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And Josh comes in and he's sort of the. Well, you know, if you've seen it spoiling, I'm spoiling a lot. I don't care, Gary. I know you want to try to not spoil things. He becomes the the foil. (laughs) I'm laughing. I'm laughing because (laughs) I am witnessing Damon gives no fucks. (laughs) (laughs) If you haven't seen it yet. I didn't know you didn't want to spoil things. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, like I was trying I mean, we not didn't to, but I thought about it. And I was like, well, if people actually tune in and are kind of interested, like I don't, okay. I'm not in the mindset of like running through every plot beat and giving them the breakdown of everything that happens in the film. I'm, I'm like, okay, like, you know, there's this, there's that, blah, blah, blah. It has, you know, and I, I guess at this moment, I'm not really seeing the rele- relevance of Josh, but that's another issue. <laughs> I think the, the... <laughs> For me, the relevance of, of Josh is to sort of sort of re rework the whole trope situation. Mm. That we needed a foil of some kind beyond no, technically, realistically, let me put it like this. Realistically, if they had played the movie the way it could have been, we didn't need this additional foil. Because Billy and Aaron's personalities were enough of a clash in certain ways Mm -hmm. that they could have very Mm -hmm. easily broken up on their own. True. That right there. That right there. Very easily. Like, I, 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 I think maybe they were trying to throw in this whole aspect of this is a different, like, culture, our relationship culture kind of is different in some ways. I don't want to say different because I know it's not true because I know that there's plenty of people that in L in hetero couples that do things like polycules and um, pansexually, you know, right. are dating other people and all that stuff. We, we, we know that to be a thing, but that's not this movie. Right. Right. <laughs> but we needed to, they, I don't, well, They didn't need to add Josh, but they added Josh as a another sort of like plot point foil to complicate matters and I think make it a little bit more now, if that makes sense. Mm. Because it starts, we know how it started. You and I know how it started. I will try not to say anything more. And then we know how that ended. And it becomes this weird situation where we've we've learned a lot about Aaron and who he is and what he wants to do with his life. And he's not 100% happy with his life, but he's not 100% happy with his life because he's a quote unquote closeted gay man. He's not happy with his life because like a lot of us are, he's, he doesn't like his job. He's never liked this job, but he well, does it, I think, to 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 raise, put money on the table. And well, uh, yeah, and and as clarification, Aaron yeah. is not in the closet completely. He lives in New York City. He has a successful job. He makes lots of money. He's unhappy with his personal life. He is out, but he is not 
<laughs> I don't know how to say this. Like, um, if I had to compare the two main characters, like Billy Eichner's Bobby is gay, like <laughs> obnoxiously, mm-hmm. and Aaron is just gay. Like, you know, and they're all uh, they're on very different, like, you know, planes of existence. Right. And if you haven't figured it out, Aaron is the bro. Like, and that was one of the things you and I talked about last week is I have an issue with the naming of the film. Like, I don't care for the fact that they call it bros. It turned me off. It did. It it made me not want to see the movie. I had no interest in it. And now I'm still having a problem with it. And I'm like, I wish you'd called it something else. I don't know what, but like, like the whole point of naming it bros has fallen like tragically apart in the concept of the film because Aaron is apparently the bro. Like he's the hyper masculine, athletic, jock, kind of like gets douchey in a personality at times, like, you know. And and I think there was an attempt to make fun of that, like in con in, in, because it's a romantic comedy, and that bothered me a little bit because I was mm-hmm. like, why do we have to make fun of it? Well, that sort of thing I um ooh, whoa, that's the word I was gonna not want to put in there. Um <laughs> I'm not going to throw that in the, in the, uh, anyway. So it's funny because one of the things I was going to comment about was we talked about like, this was trying to be mainstream. This was trying to be like, you know, for everybody, but it was going to be an LGBTQ predominantly cast movie, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of digs and swipes and shade thrown at straight people throughout the movie. And Mostly I know from that, Bobby. Well, yes. And that's sort of where my conflict lies. We want this to be a, a mainstream everyone kind of movie, but we're literally at almost every turn, practically every turn, from the main character. Mm-hmm. Throw in the, the side eye digs, what have you, at um, heteros, at straights, at, at, at that part. Well, and what I find interesting is that Bobby as a character is an angry gay man. Mm, mm. Like from from the first few see first like first few seconds. <laughs> Fact, yeah. He he is an angry gay man, and he doesn't ever really lose that. I mean technically when he and Aaron date he softens mm-hmm. and everybody thinks that's huge because <laughs> yeah. one of the subplots is that Bobby's going to be miserable and he's going to be single for all of his life and I'm thinking no shit like <laughs> <laughs> like I was I mean that was the thing is I was like I would never date him in a million years I don't care if he put on a hundred pounds I'd be like you're a douche like I don't want to mm-hmm. I don't want to be around you like you're a pain in the ass yeah. and, but he's like that practically with everybody except for that one weird scene when josh shows up with his with his fiance like right right before the movie other than that he's always just like the douche canoe and so that's the thing that was strange to me is like you're right like there's this constant criticism and he's like and he's biting with Mm -hmm. his criticism like sometimes Mm -hmm. it's witty but a lot of it is just like guttural like i'm Call me Michael Myers. I'm going to gut the fuck out of you like right. with facts about history and the way that our community has been treated. And yeah. I was just like, is this the time or the place? But I guess that's the whole point of yeah. his character in the film and that whole thing that happens in the plot with, you know, and yeah. things kind of blow up. And I'm just like, oh. yeah, yeah, it just it just became this very odd. Like, why? Why? Are you, I, I get it. And I and and from a you know queer perspective i understand it we do not have a lot of representation we often are put in the sidelines the reason that i wanted to see this movie was because it was not going to be a tragedy mm. um you know we talked well. about two, like well mm, sorry girl <laughs> well like jeff mentioned in the beginning like like he talked about Broken Hearts Club and and Jeffrey and spoiler alert, gay people die in these movies. Like it's sort of a crux point of the movie. Love, valor, compassion, amazing movie, but people fucking die. There's this there's this known tragedy of being LGBTQ that 
if you've seen any of these movies that becomes sort of the, 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 the plot point is that being gay, well, you know, being gay sometimes means death. And that's where there's a, there's, I, he has, Billy has one of our Bobby, what the fuck, I don't care. One of his many rants in this movie was that specific plot, that specific theme and that got me because I was like, yes, it's true. We don't have a lot of good feel move feel good movies. It happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen all the time. Right. And um there was I was gonna think of one. There's one that came out a while back that in particular I was thinking of when I saw this, because I was trying to remember when was the last sort of mainstream LGBTQ movie? And mm. what came to mind, and I'm just going to make sure before I say this. Okay. Go ahead. So while you're looking for that, shout out to the theater gays, because Bobby's character goes on a rant at one point and talks about the formative experience at the age of 13, I think, going to see Love, Valor, Compassion as a stage production. And he's so very frank about this conversation in a crowded place. It is a little loud. It is talking about, like, seeing gay men on stage, like, simulating sex acts and being naked. And, I mean, like, <laughs> so... That part was riveting to me because I was I've seen that show and it is a good show. And so like I was conflicted because I'm there with him as a character being like, how wild is this to see? But I'm also cringing because I'm like, you're talking about how you're not even really into puberty yet. And you're watching this like that's very progressive of your parents to have done that. And at the same time, I'm also like paying attention of like the people immediately around you are not wanting to hear this like hello pay attention to your environment watch your local space like around you your bubble not the time not the place but that but that intentionally happens in the film of course because we have to have a plot point blah 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 so that really cracked me up that you, <laughs> you mentioned that and i was like oh yeah that's right he even brings that up in the movie which was ironic to me and i was like it was a little meta because mm -hmm. it takes place in New York, anyways. Yeah, it was Moonlight. The movie when I the one I was thinking of was Moonlight. Huh? Uh, Moonlight. Twenty sixteen. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay, it took me a moment to even think of what it was. Yeah, it won the Academy Award for Best Film Picture. Yes. But, yeah, it was the one where I think that's the one. Sorry, <laughs> I think if I'm not mistaken, it was the one where at the awards Kevin Beatty. Beatty <laughs> and now and incorrectly announced La La Land, if I'm remembering that one correctly. If I'm remembering, don't get me wrong, I could be wrong. But anyway, but again, like it's just, it was just this, you know, that moment I remember being sitting in the in the theater, and that was kind of when it hit me why. I wanted to watch this movie mm. because despite our criticisms of the movie overall, I'll kind of say that it is a decent movie that isn't a tragedy that is also mainstream. We know that there are a lot of feel good gay movies out there, LGBT movies out there that are wonderful, but don't get the quote unquote hype our publicity that this movie should be getting or has gotten. I'm going to, well, again, something else to talk about. Um, so it made, it made me pause and think about that moment because I was like, oh, there's kind of a point to this. And I, I'm glad it was put in the movie. I kind of wish it had been said by someone else. Like I would have loved it if Aaron had had this rant, someone who maybe got to see some of these films and that's maybe why he was worried and concerned about coming out mm. and what have you. And then over time he realized it's okay 
because of, you know, we're starting to see things and our cultures are changing and all that stuff. Having said that, shall we transition to, like, some of the criticisms? Um, well, some just, like, you, you mentioned... Have we not already been criticizing? I'm <laughs> talking about, like, the finger, the digital finger pointing you put in the... Oh, yeah. Well, because there was there was a lot of like consternation about the fact that the box office opening weekend was poor, and why was that? And was it not promoted correctly? And like why didn't the why didn't the community turn out for it? And mm-hmm. one of the things I alluded to earlier was that apparently it was supposed to have an August release and it got moved out by like uh, six weeks or something. And people in the know were all immediately like, the fuck? Like why did you move it from the summer movie season when it probably would have done much better? with the LGBTQ community than like right in moving into scary like movie mm-hmm. season. Like of all the dates to release it at the end of September, like yeah. it, it's so, notably in a time when movies don't really get released that do well. Like mm-hmm. and and to be fair, part of the reason why it still I think stings is because apparently the budget was twenty two million and as of right now it's at ten point eight million. Right. So it hasn't even quite made half of its initial budget, which is why I think, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the potential of this for the future. Apparently, Billy had made some comments on Twitter online and, you know, people took that some of that out of context a little bit. Um, There's just, you know, there was a lot of like. What do we call it? Uh, Couch quarterbacking or whatever, like. Um. You're talking, um, uh, oh shit, um, oh god, armchair quarterback, right? Quarterbacking, like people were, you know, people had a lot of opinions about a lot of different things in the first like 10 days. And I was like, there was a part of me that's like, could we just let the movie be the movie and just let it, like, you know, see how things shake out? And yet at the same time, I was like, just as guilty. And you and I talked about this, this Mm -hmm. poster that if you're watching the video feed between you and Jeff, this is the promotional poster that they put out there. I told you I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. It was another reason I wasn't interested. I didn't like I didn't like the name and I didn't like the imagery that they were putting out there. Mm -hmm. And then what's what's insulting to me is the tagline is a romantic comedy that gives you all the feels. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure that that makes sense. Yeah, it's like weird. gives me all the feels. What are the, what are the feels I'm supposed to have? Because oh, I get it. Because they're touching each other's asses. Oh, huh? Feel now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's another version of this uh-huh. that you and I talked about that I thought was way better. Right. That shows the front of Billy Eichner and Luke, uh, this name went out of my head, um, McFarlane, and they're in suits, and they're facing the camera, and the tagline is, a boy meets bro love story. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I like that better, even though I still don't like the name bros. Um, yeah. I I just thought it was better presented although part of my issue with the way they're dressed so the these costumes are from the um the night of the museum being opened Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the gala or whatever and while i like the way billy eichner really looks it just occurred to me that if the movie's called bros and aaron is this you know more bro-y guy the Mm -hmm. stereotype that he should not be in the suit Right. He should be a jeans, Timberlands, an LL Bean flannel. Like, you know, he should he should be look looking more rugged, so to speak. Right, right, right. So so you understand looking at it as to who the bro is, quote unquote. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So I mean I just so I think part of the marketing was fallible, like had issues, the the, mm-hmm. the release schedule of it. Um yeah. I also think they just like shot too high. Like I think they they went so far, so big, and I'm like, 
well, there's your disappointment factor. Mm. Like you, you, you built this with an expectation. Obviously all films are made to make a profit, like, right. or at least at least at a minimum break even. Right. So the fact that they went through 22 million for this film, I'm like, well, yikes. Think of who they like they brought in. They well, brought in several like high profile. I'm not talking about the, the main cast. And, and just to be honest, I'm not ta- just talking about the main cast. I'm talking about like Christian Tenowith, Deborah Messing, Harvey Feinstein. Um, they did the little like um, Ben Stiller, Keenan Thompson, Amy Schumer, Seth Meyers. They were all in these like moments of the film. Now, they weren't big parts, obviously, but. Part of that probably had to do with, you know, they had to, they were, maybe they were asked, maybe they got, you know, I doubt anyone did this pro bono. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's a movie. But, um, yeah, they had, you know, um, so just as you were talking about, so it says, bro, like I'm reading this from the Wikipedia, bros had its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival on September 9th, 2022, and was theatrically theatrically released in the United States on September 30th, 2022 by Universal Pictures. It was originally scheduled for a release on August 12th, 2022. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, ah, I see. And then uh, one of the fun things, I was just reading this, it says prior to its commercial release, the film was subjected to review bombing from users on IMDb. And I remember that part. Mm. Um, Because thank you, Wikipedia, for giving me a link to what review bombing is. Um, And it says a review bomb is an internet phenomenon in which a large number of people or a few people with multiple accounts post negative user reviews online in an attempt to harm the sales or the popularity of a product, service, or a business. So Rat, I like I I remember that being mentioned as well that there was a lot of that happened that happened before the movie had even aired that or premiered that there was a lot of people reviewing the movie that had no way of seeing it. Mm. Um, I don't know if it had a negative effect. Um, it would be interesting to kind of get that data if you could but um it's a sign of some of the you know negative in this industry and in this culture in our lives that we don't even want to we can't even see the movie we don't even want to get an opportunity to see the movie because we think it just will be you know since it is LGBT centered, that it is detrimental, whatever word you want to use. Right. Um, I just think it's odd that it had this happen as well. Um, I do agree with you. I think that it being, it being moved for one reason or another was not the greatest thing. Um, I don't think it was, um, I don't think it, I don't, I don't think it got the publicity it needed, um, to be blunt. Um, having said that though, I know I saw a lot of people talking about it, but a lot of my people, a lot of people in my circles are LGBTQ or LGBTQ friendly. So, of course, they're going to either want to see it or are interested or want to talk about it. So it kind of becomes that conflict of, yes, you can have all of the LGBTQ people try to see this movie, and that may help. Mm -hmm. But if your goal was to get mainstream audience, I don't know if it was going to be successful. As you said, it shot very high. Um, And I think that was to its detriment. So here's an interesting juxtaposition, because I was thinking about this, about the release schedule and some other stuff. On the exact same date, a movie called The Good House was released. Mm -hmm. 
which is apparently a comedy drama genre. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, yeah, it was released on September 30th, same day. Mm-hmm. And to date, it has grossed two million in the box office. Mm. I don't know how much it costs to make it, but we need to know that it stars Sigourney Weaver and Kevin Klein. Mm-hmm. Two well-known actors in Hollywood that are kind of considered draws for an audience. Right. And I was like, well, isn't that interesting that they've only brought in like two million. And bros has made five times that. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm curious to see what the Good House budget was in comparison because... That's not a good number. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. let's see. Maybe I can find it here. So it just might very well be that it was a crappy week to release it amongst other things. You know, um, it's difficult to say. And, and, and I do feel conflicted because I look at this cast and I'm thinking about like, yeah, like they had to shell out some money for the names that they got Mm -hmm. because you're right. Like, I don't think that these people did it, you know, out of the kindness of their heart. Right. Um, You know, Deborah Messing, Amanda Beers appears, um, Guillermo Diaz, you know, like Dot Marie Jones. Mm -hmm. Correct me up actually, naturally. Um, You know, like, I mean, there's this whole list of individuals, Jay Rodriguez, like there's some great trans representation. I mean, like they, they did a lot of good things. And I imagine like one of the things that we've been doing in the past, like five years or plus or so as American society is saying like, pay me my worth, Mm -hmm. like do not short sell yourself, get your coin, make the money that you are worth. And so there's a part of me that's like, I could see where this, could have become pricey if people were like, well, if you want me in it, this is, this is, you know, what it is as opposed to people doing it just for like pennies. Right. So yeah, like I kind of feel a little conflicted about that. Cause I'm like, mm, okay. Like, yeah. and yet at the same time, I'm like, you know, what was it? Well shot. Mm, yeah. Like there wasn't really any like visuals in it that I was like, the hell. Um, and they had to shoot in P-Town. They, mm-hmm. you know, had, yeah, some different sets and, and different things that they had to do. There was some pretty interesting, probably, expense on the budget side for the things they had to develop, like the amusement park ride in the museum. You have to see the movie to understand what that's even about. <laughs> like... like <laughs> I mean, right. there's just there's yeah, there was a lot going on in this movie, and to say the least, yeah, and to give it this, you know, when you when it said twenty two million as the budget, I was kind of like, okay, then a lot of that makes sense because you look at what happens, and you look through the 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 entirety of the movie, and you're kind of like, oh, it makes a lot of it makes sense, a lot of it makes sense. The cost wise does make sense. The budget makes sense. <laughs> You had prolific actors, you had a very interesting cast, engaging cast, you had a lot of representation. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, though, knowing that that was the budget, or that was going to be what this movie would be, what could have been done differently? Like, could they have done this movie for less and would it have had the same impact it's hard for me to say um yeah there's a part of me that wonder again i'm you know billy was the writer i think in one of the uh was he a producer i thought he was directed yeah he okay so he co-wrote the script and then he's one of the executive producers. Okay, got it. Okay. 
Decker, but he does, that doesn't really mean anything. But, um, but yeah, like that is part of the issue as well. Um, since you were both writing this and you were also now producing it, like, could you have made some different choices to kind of balance out what you wanted? Or were you, as we've kind of been, you know, going at it, shooting for the stars to kind of get this movie mainstream kind of like amazing, you know, moment, you know, great like LGBT representation, rom-com, blah, blah, blah. Because that's my like thought about it is, I know you mentioned like, you know, pay your worth and what have you, but I wonder, could we have done this for less? I don't know. It's the same impact. It's hard to say. It is. It's very difficult to say because there's a part of me that's like, you know, there there was production crews, you know, and Mm -hmm. costuming. I mean, and there was, you know, styling and wigs and makeup, you know, and all that jazz that has to go into it. So I, I, they did, they did, this is not the, I don't know, this is the only words that come to mind. They did it right? Mm-hmm. Question mark? Like, <laughs> I, I, I had no flaws with pretty much most of that or all of that. So production-wise, I think they just did really well. And maybe it really does take that much money to make that happen. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at. I feel like we decided... We decide, like you said, we they decided to shoot for the stars and see what happens. Ultimately, we're going to put a big budget. We're going to make this big production. Yeah. We're going to make it LGBT. We're going to have all these stars. We're going to you know do as much as we can to kind of make this happen. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get it, you know, greenlit by a major company, right? Which is a great thing. But I don't think, and this is, I think, where some of the criticism comes from in regards to the marketing. I don't think the company did the movie the service it needed considering the budget that it had. And the star quality that it had and the representation that it had. Um, There's a wonder for me that... You know, I I have to. I would love to know why it was delayed. Uh, maybe there's an article connected to the Wikipedia. Yes. I mean, there could be. So it's it's a Apatow company production. So it's Judd Apatow who classically, you know, has done other films like This Is Forty, Wonderlust, Get Him to the Greek. Um, so you know, it's a it's an established company. It's not like someone you've never heard of before. Mm-hmm. Um, and Universal Pictures is the distributor. So Mm -hmm. if anything, I would say it's probably Universal Pictures is where the delay comes in on the release. So the, um, the Wikipedia article linked to a deadline.com site, um, that talked about the original premiere date of being August 12, 2022, but this article was written March 5th, 2021. So Mm. over a year before it actually premiered. Um, That's interesting. Oh, I didn't need to close that. Anyway, go back to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. Also, I'm looking at a website and they have a different um, kind of synopsis, one line description of the movie. And they say two men with commitment problems attempt a relationship. Which is kind I mean, of funny to me because they're not wrong. But they're not right either. How, well, are they okay. not, how are they not right? Bobby and Aaron have issues with being in a relationship and commitment. That's exactly what happens. Eh. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Uh, here we go. Hmm. Oh, another deadline article written in January. Okay, I don't want notifications. Thank you. Shut the fuck up. Um, 
So the this article from Deadline is called titled Billy Eichner Romantic Comedy Bros Moves to Fall After Mission Impossible 7 Reassignment to 2023. Interesting. The news comes after Paramount Today moved Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible 7 from the September 30th date to July 14, 2023. Bros is the only major studio production on September 30th, the weekend before Sony Marvel animated Mar- Spider-Man, ooh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 debuts, which I don't think it did then. No, they moved it. They had to. Yeah. Bros is billed as the first from bro, Bros is billed as quote the first romantic comedy from a major studio about two gay men maybe possibly probably stumbling towards love maybe they're both very busy oh my god shut the fuck up with that anyway sorry um, yeah so anyways hmm. yeah. So uh, this is this is the way I look at it now for takeaways. I think people should go see the film. I think they should. This is what I said in my in my Twitter. I think like go see it. Decide for yourself. Right. It's still playing on screens. Mm -hmm. If you can go see it. You know, buy the five dollar ticket on a Tuesday or whatever it is, like discount your local theater if you want to save money and don't not pay a full price for it. Um, Because that's probably what I would have done. If I hadn't already had the movie credit, I probably would have seen it on discount night after uh-huh. work. Would have uh-huh. been late, but I, you know. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, so I had totally originally planned to go see this movie again um, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim and I had talked about it earlier. He went to see it, and I was like, well, I can see it again and kind of have a fresher, have it fresher in my mind. Um. And then he uh, he had to go to Kings Island for his for work stuff, and then he you know, spent some time doing stuff like that. And he got home, and I had done like I was doing stuff around the house all day. And when he got home, we were both kind of like, <sighs> like, do we? Yeah, like do we really want to? Like, we knew what time it was going to be. It was, we were about two hours before that time. And we just kind of looked at each other and we were like, eh. like you said, like, you just said, like, eh. like, do we really want to like get up and go to the movie theater and spend the uh, probably, you know, 11, 12 bucks each to go see the, the-, the movie to watch for two hours? Because it is a two hour movie, by the way, it's an hour and 55 minutes whatever um two plus hours if you're going to the theater um and then try to have dinner at almost 10 o'clock so we just kind of went no we don't really want to do that um maybe we'll see it another time i i will say i do want to try seeing it again to kind of now that i've seen it and kind of know where it where you know the plot points are to see if I get another perspective. Um, I feel sometimes seeing things after seeing it before you can kind of yes you know what's happening but you can kind of see more because you can kind of have your eyes wider and like look at more things. Right. Um, I don't know when that'll happen. Uh, Definitely not on a Tuesday night because Jim works till eight o'clock. But um, but there's a part of me that does want to see it. We'll see what happens. We may not get to see it. Jim is, I will say, Jim is kind of meh about it. Uh, I am more enticed to go see it and go see it again. But I think that's more for perspective now than actually just like supporting and that sounds bad but that's kind of where it is for me i want to see if there is something i miss the first time like like we talked like i talked about it the 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 original like the start of the movie is so chaotic to me that it i think it threw me off for a while and 
then we kind of get into the meat of the movie. And I just, I feel like I miss stuff that could have, that I should have seen that would have made everything kind of align as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, other than that, though, I kind of feel like you, I do think everyone, I don't, you know, I think people should try to see the movie if you can. I do think it has some significance. Sorry. Um, But I also, if it's not your thing, it's not going to be your thing. You know, it's, it, the way it builds itself is accurate. It is a LGBT rom-com. Mm-hmm. If rom-coms aren't your thing, you're not going to enjoy this. There's funny aspects to it, but there's also this other element to it. So if you're not a romance movie, movie fan, you're not going to really get into this. If you're not a comedy fan, the romance to me, honestly, is not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So that part of it's true. That part of it is accurate. If it's not your thing, it's not going to be your thing. I don't care about, uh, to be blunt, I don't care if you want us to try to support the movie. If it's not our movie, if it's not something we want to see, we're not going to see it. And maybe that's the issue. Um, maybe if it had been something else, I don't know what else, maybe you might have gotten more grass about it. Um like you said, Gary, I wonder how well it would have done if it had just been a LGBTQ comedy. Because it's funny. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're, they're, hindsight's always twenty twenty about all the things that could have been done or should have been done or, mm-hmm. you know, improvements and all that kind of stuff. I, I, what I'm curious about that's to come is where will it go when it goes streaming? Because mm. while you were talking, I was thinking, I wonder how this would have done if it went straight to like Netflix, let's say. Mm. Like if if it would have gotten, if it could have become viral and if people would have been like, girl, you need to see this. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And like, you know, yeah. and, and like if that would have been a thing, I just, I don't know. Yeah, it's, that's fair. it's hard for hard for me to say. So I'm curious, like, Will it end up there ultimately, or will it like will Disney somehow option it and put it over like on Hulu? Will it go to Amazon? Like mm. I'm not really sure, but I'm intrigued because I think it will have a life there. Mm-hmm. So probably next year in the LGBTQ Pride Month collection, it'll be appearing in some things. Right. I don't know. We'll see. But I, I feel so, that we've we've heavily criticized it and there's so much more we could probably say about it. But the reality is, I think that people need to see it and decide for themselves, like if they're going to enjoy it, because it does have high points to it. But it also has some just some stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to look through if it went anywhere. Uh, no, I probably wouldn't go to Peacock. I just was trying to figure out where is Universal? Where would they put their things? And anywho, that's going to take a little bit more digging. But um, I I do wonder that. And I do think, yes, if you want to see it, go see it. If you don't want to go see it, you know, I don't think there's going to be anything really that can convince you otherwise. Other than like saying, hey, support LGBTQ stuff. Right. And that's really it. Like I don't, I don't know what else to say there. Like, there's not anything more there. I, I, I think you'll enjoy it. I feel you could enjoy it if it's your thing. The the dozen or so, myself included, that went from the court Horus, we all had very good things to say. Um. Um, people laughed, you know, um, there were moving moments. Um, 
but that's this falls in line with what I would enjoy as a movie. Right. You might be different. Yeah. Trying to see <laughs> see some of the uh, production companies here. Oh, Columbia. I mean, mm-hmm. it might might show up on Peacock because Universal is the distributor. Yeah, I was thinking that too. So, it, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. No, no, we're super bad right now. Uh, that's another Avatar production. <laughs> yeah, something to look at. Well, folks, uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining us for this revival of uh, Stay Well Movies, even how temporary it is. Maybe we need to change it from LTA to Stay Well Movies. <laughs> but it works. I'm not going to go through all that work. But that's the end. End of line. Plenty of ways to contact us. If you would like, if you have seen bros... Uh, uh, Bros is a bad movie. Prove me wrong. I'm gonna have a sign up. That's that. I'm getting clears for my. Well, okay. So he's going along with my. Hey, what do you think? <laughs> uh, you can do that. You can communicate that to us in many ways, including going. To our website at CubsOutLoud.com, leaving a comment on the blog or shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll Talk. that's 361-265-8255. And to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and technically we're on Tumblr, I suppose, maybe, kind of. <coughs> we auto-post there our shows, anyways. Uh, at CubsOutLoud on the appropriate place in your URL, you can join our entourage chat and just chat us up at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col if you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows you can check out our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col and you can support us in many ways including uh getting some merch such as some of these consent is my foreplay shirt in various different designs including leather and bear and then we of course we got logo shirts like gary has also hats and mugs <laughs> damn pseudo green screens you can get some of those at zazzle.com slash cups out loud some of those designs are designed by smashy which you'll find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cups out loud or if you want to send us uh, some money as a donation you can do that over at paypal at paypal.me slash cups out loud you can find us on basically any podcasting platform. If I'm not there, if we're not there, let me know and I can fix that. Um, but pretty much the more popular ones, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon Audible. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It's Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, or Windjump, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, where I stream bears and dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Uh, most bear-related sites are on Facebook. <clears throat> or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you want to find me online, you can pretty much look anywhere for Gabber73 on Twitter. Uh, specifically, the not safe for work one is Gabber73XXX. And with that, take it out, everybody! Good night, everybody.